Let's do it. We're jumping into Threat Actor Tools, and we kick it off with a graph. Yes. This graph is a quick history lesson, but what it comes down to is back in the day, the sophistication of our attack tools, the power, the coolness behind them all, was low. Which means in order to successfully perform an attack, you would have a good amount of technical knowledge. But nowadays, as our tools become much more powerful and sophisticated and much more automated, the sophistication of the tools is high. And the technical knowledge that the users need in order to perform attacks will be low. So, those threat actors, they need less knowledge nowadays to do the same amount of power, if not more, attacks against targets. So, some of the tools that we can talk about, they're called penetration testing tools. We'll start here with password crackers. And a password cracker is all about being able to perform password recovery for somebody. Whether that person wants their password recovered or not. With wireless hacking tools, we can talk about surveying wireless networks and then looking for vulnerabilities in order to take advantage of it. Now, for example, one of the tools would be ViStumbler. I load it up on my machine, scanned all the access points around me. This is a live scan running right now since the numbers are changing. But what I can take a look at here is every single wireless network nearby that I can detect. And I can see the authentication mechanism that has been chosen by that wireless network, whether it's open and I can jump on or WPA2 Enterprise or WPA2 Personal. Maybe there'd be a weapon here. I can even see the encryption that has been chosen and also manufacturer of the wireless device. And by using this information, I could then try to look for vulnerabilities to crack through that network. As we continue on, we can talk about network scanning and hacking tools, and this allows us to probe network devices and more, and even look for open sessions and TCP and UDP sockets and port numbers to jump on. We'll cover more of that with Nessus later on. With packet crafting, we can look at custom building a packet to make our way through a firewall that's trying to block us from gaining access to another network. With packet sniffers, we shove Wireshark right into here. We can try to capture and analyze packets, and we can even save that capture for later. With rootkit detectors, as a threat actor, we'd want to try to break around this and not be detected, but this is a directory and file integrity check. It looks for things that have been maliciously modified and also can be maliciously active. We have fuzzers that are going to be submitting invalid, unexpected, or just random data. And the idea here is to try to get a system to crash and break through a vulnerability. We have forensics tools which can be used to recover data. They can be used to pull back files that have been deleted, whether somebody wants them pulled back or not. We have debuggers to try to reverse engineer our binary files and when writing exploits. Pretty much there's a lot of the computer science behind the scenes. We can have our hacking operating systems, which include things like Backtrack and Kali. They're specially designed OSs preloaded with penetration testing tools. We have our encryption tools, which can encrypt data and make it cipher text so it can't be read. Whether the user wants their data encrypted or not, and the threat actor decides to give the key to decrypt it or not. We have vulnerability exploitation tools, which are awesome. These are tools that can identify whether a remote host it's actually vulnerable to an attack. And a good example of this thing would be, which is Nessus. And I have this loaded up on my machine. I scan my network, and we can see all these devices getting little reports back. And one of them has red, and that happens to be my firewall. So if I click on my firewall, and I can click on that red critical issue, what I'll find here is the Unix operating system on my Edge firewall my network, it's no longer supported. Which means, if there's any new security patches out there for issues, I'm not getting it. Solution is to upgrade to a version of Unix OS that's supported. I should do that. That's cool to know. What are these attack types that threat actors will take against me? Well, eavesdropping attack. Using a tool like Wireshark, a threat actor would be able to capture network traffic and listen to it. They can even save the capture and open it at a later time to study it. With data modification, we take it one step further. It's not just listening and capturing data, but it literally is capturing data and altering it without the sender or receiver knowing. With IP address spoofing, a threat actor can pretend to be whoever they want to be. They can choose the source IP address on their message and send this message out across the network. Password-based attacks, anybody can do this. There's tons of tools out there. But if a threat actor can discover a valid user account, then they can have the same rights as a real user, and they can then try to escalate their privileges. Now, one example of a password-based attack would be having password and username lists and using these lists with a tool. For example, there's a tool known as THC Hydra, and you could take a username list and a password list, and you combine them together and you knock on a front door that's say 150,000 times. 
Well, in this case, I have a text file that has 10 million passwords in it and a text file with 10 million usernames in it. I can have a tool like THC Hydra grab both files, target a specific application or a network device, and literally go to town cycling through 10 million possibilities times 10 million possibilities, if you get my gist, and try to break through with a valid username and password. Denial of service. This is where you are literally preventing legitimate use of a network service or server. And there's tons of tools for this. One of them that I have in my machine, for example, is Low Orbit Ion Cannon. Sophistication of the tool versus technical knowledge. Back to that conversation. With this tool, you select your target. You lock on, you charge your laser, and you go. And the whole idea is this tool will be reporting statistics down below at the bottom, and you're trying to overwhelm a target, so thus the target is not providing network and client services to standard users. Man in the middle attack, we're talking about having that threat actor that puts themselves right between a source and destination, and they're actively monitoring, capturing, and trying to control the communication without the sender and receiver knowing. With compromised key, we've got where an attacker can use in a compromised key, which is the legitimate key that people don't know has been compromised, in order to gain access to communication or to network services. And lastly, with a sniffer attack, which is very similar back to Wireshark, a threat actor can use an application or even a physical device to read, monitor, and capture network data that's being exchanged real-time, and they can literally grab and see those messages.